So I studied the effect of trauma on the brain, specifically adolescent female brains. And I feel compelled to mention that this was not my original thesis. My books turned out to be quite different than I thought they were going to be. I was originally going to study the way fairy tales affected our brains, but I found this to be a much more compelling topic. Uh, the first book I read was the story of Sybil. She is a young woman in the 20s and 30s who was severely abused and neglected throughout her childhood, which caused her to gain uh, multiple personality or dissociative personality disorder. And the second book I read was a book called Meeting at the Crossroads, Women's Psychology and Girls' Development. I thought this was going to be a much more novel-like book, but it turned out to be actually a study done on uh, teenage girls and how their brain developed as they aged. Uh, this is Nadine Burke Harris, and she did a TED talk on how the adolescent brain is affected by trauma, and she said something that I wanted to quote, if I can find it. Uh, she said, the brain's fear response works by producing adrenaline in the adrenal gland, and that's great when you're confronted by a bear in the woods, say. The problem is when the bear starts to come home every night. This is our brain, the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the cerebellum, the occipital lobe, and the parietal lobe. The frontal lobe is the main processing center of everything, including fear. And the frontal lobe is the part that gets damaged when you have continuous fear. Um, in the family lifestyle, when you have someone, one of the parents, or really anyone abusing the children, the frontal lobe is, um, I believe, severely downsized throughout their development, which causes them to have severe anxiety and depression and even a four times greater chance of heart disease as they age. Fear affects everything and anything that happens throughout their lives. They become more prone to health issues. They become more um, prone to abusing someone themselves, which is actually kind of scary to think about. Because why would you want to hurt someone when you know how that feels? But I also realized something else. The optimism that these books suggested is throughout time and help, like Sybil got help and she uh, worked really hard and was eventually able to reconnect her personalities and the study that was done on uh, young girls uh, produced a lot of new information that is being used in the psychology world today to help uh, understand how the adolescent brain functions and even especially how young girls are being kind of pushed to the side and their thoughts and opinions are not really being heard. But the books both present a significant amount of optimism that that can and possibly will change in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you.